you very much. Uh, and thanks for selecting this talk. It's clearly, uh, it clearly shows that, uh, that uh, you are interested in, in this new way of, of computation. Sorry, can I have a... Thanks. So let me start with a clear definition of what is a quantum computer uh, in big words. It's a device that uh, can process the information in a quantum mechanical way. And that means that the, the quantum information units that are called qubits uh, obey the laws of quantum mechanics, that these are the physics that happens at the microscopic scale. In, uh, in a big picture, it, uh, it's composed of two parts. The software part is the set of instructions, uh, that means the physical operations on the device that are sent to the hardware. And this set of instructions, this software, is classical. That means that it's traditional computing. And this set of instructions is sent to the quantum computer, uh, which is composed with the quantum processing unit that contains the qubits, which are the basic information units of, informa of quantum information. Uh, this hardware is purely quantum, and uh, the result of the computation is uh, return again to the software part to post-process or to obtain the, the solution of our problem or to start the loop once again. So in the end, quantum computation has not come here to replace classical computation or traditional computation, but it needs from this traditional computation also to work. So in a sense, it's a different way of uh, doing computation. And why is, uh, why is it so powerful and why are we doing this kind of effort to build these devices uh, in the recent years? So first of all, it works in a completely different way. So instead of having bits, which are the, the basic informa classical information units that are zeros and ones uh, and well-defined well states, we have what we call qubit, which is the quantum information unit. And it has two uh, well-defined states, the zero and the one, but it can also have a mixture between these two states, which is called the superposition state. And an important point here is that the, the coefficients in, in front of this zero and this one can be complex. That means can be positive, negative, or, or complex uh, imaginary numbers. So during the quantum computation uh, of our quantum algorithms, uh, there will ha uh, happen a set of, um, of uh, phenomena uh, called uh, entanglement and also called interference, which will be in the, in the key part of our quantum algorithms that doesn't happen in classical computation. So uh, because of uh, these superposition states, if we want to simulate what happens in a quantum computer with a traditional computer, even if, a, if it's a supercomputer, we need an exponential amount of bits of information. And this is the main reason why it's so difficult and so hard, and it requires so much resources to simulate uh, quantum systems like chemistry, like material science, like condensed matter models, etc., with classical computers, with traditional computers. And this is one of the reasons why are we building this kind of devices, because we want to understand better what happens at the micros microscopic scale, because it has many implications, as you can imagine, in, in different fields. And on the other hand, it's not only about the, the resources that we need to study uh, quantum simulations and quantum systems, but it's also about other kinds of problems that we can solve with this kind of, of computers. So in particular, we know that there are a class of states, uh, sorry, a class of problems that we can solve efficiently with a quantum computer, but we can't do that efficiently with a classical computer. And one of these main examples is the factorization uh, algorithm that is efficient with quantum computers, and that means that in the, in the future, once we have a more powerful quantum computers, we will be able to uh, break, uh, break uh, the cryptography, the classical cryptography, because this is one of the, of the problems that is at the core of this, uh, of this kind of cryptography. So, but uh, to arrive to these super big quantum computers that are so powerful for these particular kinds of, of problems, we need to address different uh, challenges. And let me summarize some of them in this slide. So the first one is people. We need a critical mass. We need people that are trained to use quantum computers and to develop new quantum algorithms and also to build these devices. And there is a clear lack in the world in people that knows about this, this technology because this quite a recent uh, field. It has more than 40 years of history, but it was in the recent 15 years or so that these devices have become a reality. So now there is a huge urge for uh, companies, for research centers, universities, etc., to find this talent and to find people to, to work on this computation. 
Next, it's the enabling technology. So to build a quantum computer, we need also other kinds of technologies that are not only ap uh, applied to quantum computation, but also to other fields. And that in includes cryogenics, includes uh, fast electronics, include uh, integrated chips, and include photonics uh, among and, uh, many other uh, technologies that are required to boost this quantum computing ecosystem. We need more people from different fields, not only physicists. This is a traditionally physics uh, field, but now we also need computer scientists, we also need engineers, we need people from different backgrounds in order to uh, study and, and, and check what are the applications of this new way of, of computing. And finally, in order to have all these pillars, we also need quantum as a service. We need to offer this kind of devices to the community in order to explore all the advantages and, and all the limits of this computation. So this is the context where we have Quantum Spain. This is a 22 million euros project that comes from, uh, from uh, the government of Spain and is funded by the next generation funds. And uh, the goal of this, uh, of this project is to install a quantum computer in the VSC facilities, which access will be managed by the Spanish supercomputing network. And on top of that, we also have uh, res different research groups that will work on developing new quantum algorithms and exploring the applications in particular in artificial intelligence. And we will also have a training program to, in order to, to bring this, uh, this kind of, of computation to all kinds of people from different backgrounds in order to explore, as I said, all the potential applications and all the limits of this computation. The important point from BSC is that we are the coordinators of this uh, super big project, and that means that we will have the first South European quantum computer that will give a service, and it will be located in our center, and I think we, all, we should all be proud of, of this super big project. So let me, uh, in two slides, explain what will be the uh, specific role of BSC in this project, besides coordinating it, of course. The first of, of all is the quantum computation facilities. This is a big challenge, as you can imagine, but we are already working on that. And uh, we will choose a particular computing technology, which is called superconducting qubits. And that means that the central piece of this, uh, of this kind of, of computation is what is called a dilution refrigerator, which is a super big fridge, uh, fridge that cools down to millikelvin. That is minus 2073 de degrees Celsius degrees. So when it's open, it looks like this. It's really beautiful, but normally you will see it close uh, because otherwise it cannot work. And inside of these uh, big uh, fridges, uh, on the bottom of it, we will have uh, different quantum chips. So the goal of this project is to install different kinds of chips, uh, starting with a few qubits and uh, scaling up until the end of the project in 2025. And the goal in the end is to adapt to the state of the art technology in order to uh, introduce new quantum chips as, as long as the technology is progressing and new kind of properties are discovered with these devices. And on top of all of this, we will also have a quantum simulator, which is a traditional computing device. It's an APC device that is specifically suited for, uh, for simulating quantum systems. And in this sense, uh, we, that's uh, one of the goals that we do in the Quantic Group. Uh, which is a study precisely what are the limits of quantum computation and, the, and their applications, not only with quantum computers, but also with APH, APHPC devices. So in this sense, the goal is to benchmark, to test, and to study different quantum algorithms and, see, and also study different kinds of properties of the matter. And for that, we use uh, different uh, well-known uh, theoretical techniques that are called tensor networks. And we put all of them together inside of, uh, of uh, machines like Marian Ostrom uh, using distributed computing uh, with the help with our colleagues from computer science department. And last but not least, we also prepare and, and study different uh, quantum algorithms that are purely quantum algorithms. We run them in the cloud with different comp uh, quantum computing facilities like the IBM ones. And our goal will be to this time test these kind of algorithms in our own quantum computer. And in this sense, we do a study in, in classical, quantum classical hybrid algorithms. As I said at the beginning, we also need classical computation to, to run uh, some of the quantum algorithms. We also do quantum computation beyond the binary systems. So in quantum computing, we also have ternary, quaternary, and d-dimensional systems. And finally, we also explore analog quantum computation, which is a different paradigm inside of quantum computing that is also interesting and has many applications. And with that, I would like to finish with a provocative question, 
which is, are you ready for this quantum revolution or is your research ready for this quantum revolution? And if not, uh, maybe you can take the opportunity of this uh, quantum spin project and the opportunity of having access to this uh, machine in our research center in order to explore the possibilities that this new way of computing can offer to, to your research project. So thank you very much.